I'm here today with Jack Reed, who is the Business Development Manager at SM Magnetics, and he's one of the technical advisors when it comes to working with motor companies. So Jack, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're here today to talk about motors, but specifically the magnet portion of a motor and how the magnetics are playing their part within the motor. So Jack, uh, just to start with, I guess, where would you start? With, uh, with an engineer who's designing a motor? What, what is the most important? So I think that the starting place for any engineer or designer that's coming to us would be at the end. Um, we often like to say to start at the end, uh, whether that be with the RPM that you need, with the voltage that you need, with the amperage in that you need, um, with the horsepower torque requirements, uh, any size requirements that you have. Basically, anything that you can give us will better help us to support your project. So, Jack, I noticed that you have some components sitting right here in front of you. You brought some props for Absolutely. us. Uh, can you just talk briefly to, I guess, anything that you have sitting on this table right now for us. Sure, absolutely. So um, I, I really decided just to put a different, couple different sizes together. Um, I mean, we can go to something as small as this, uh, up to something as large as, as this, um, or possibly as this. Uh, but I, I decided to put these together really as um, just visuals uh, to, to show you some of the different things that we can do in custom and also in, in stock uh, that we do in-house. Okay, now I noticed you have some wire here. Um, and I know we're here to talk about the magnetics instead of the wire stuff, but why bring the wire today? Well, I just wanted to show the differences between some of these wire gauges. Obviously, uh, this gauge is much different from this gauge, as you can see. Um, and they have different purposes. Obviously, those purposes depend on your design mm -hmm. uh, and your application and your end goal. So um, I just wanted to show how the, this is definitely much different than this. Um, and there's a lot of sizes in between uh, that you can choose from as well. So, so Jack, from a, I'm going to transition us from wire to magnetics. Mm -hmm. But from a magnetic standpoint, how important are the magnetics when somebody may want to change a gauge wire? So when it comes to the wires and the magnetics, um, really everything in a motor is going to be working together. So if you change the size of the wire from this size, say to this, you're going to also have to change something else. So, you know, maybe the magnetics, we would probably look at that through simulations just to make sure that it's optimized. But we do like to say that everything works together. So if one thing's affected, then something else will be as well. So if you change the size of the wire, the magnetics will be affected or vice versa. Okay. It really just depends. I mean, it's all very application and design specific. So Jack, I see some, you have a couple arc magnets here right mm -hmm. now. So are arc magnets the only type of magnet that you would use in a motor or is there other things that you would recommend? So there are other magnets that we would recommend. Um, arcs are typically what people come to us with as they have this shape and can be easily put into a circular um, position. But we also use rectangles as another option and it is you know, as good of an option in some applications as the arc. So we do like to say that yes, arcs work well, but rectangles work well also. Um, and uh, those would be the two I would see as being uh, the most important uh, shapes here for a, a motor. But um, yeah, not just arcs, definitely rectangles as well. And, and air gap, let's talk about air gap real Absolutely. quickly. Is there a standard air gap that you would recommend or what would you, what would you suggest? So when it comes to air gap in a rotor and stator, and that's really the air gap that you're talking about when it comes to the motor, is the air gap in between your rotor and your stator core. So you really just want it to be able to spin. I mean, that's majority of the time, that's really what people want. And when it comes to optimization, it depends on your design. Possibly a 10 millimeter air gap would be optimizing your design or a two millimeter air gap. Really, you just want to have the most minimal air gap for the space that you have, and it still allows for your rotor to turn. So Jack, I have also noticed as I'm looking down here at some of your uh, your your play things here, mm -hmm. I noticed that you have an example of a lamination or a stator set that's skewed. Yes. Uh, and tell me why that is that way. So the one that he's talking about is this one. And, uh, the reason that it would be skewed is actually also to optimize performance. 
and to reduce or eliminate cogging. So that's one of the big things that a lot of people that come to us and, and work with us are needing is optimization and reducing cogging in their uh, design. So we decided to go with a lamination stack here that is skewed. And for that reason, actually cogging was eliminated in this uh, specific design and application and efficiency was improved. So, you know, that's not, all, that's not always the case. Uh, that efficiency is improved and that cogging is eliminated. But in this case, it was a win-win for the customer and for us as well. This is great. So Jack, <clears throat> overall, what advice would you give to the, to the engineering groups that you work with when it comes to motor design and the magnetics? So when it comes to motor design and the magnetics, I would say to always start at the end. You want your, basically your end goal to be attainable, achievable, and really, you know, possible within your size parameters, within what amperage you have, within what horsepower or torque that you need. Um, and, and really it all has to do with what your end goal is. So if we know what your end goal is, we'll have a much better chance of supporting your project. So Jack, thank you very much. Uh, Jack and I are going to be doing a series of these uh, conversations uh, as it, as it uh, relates to motors. Uh, the next uh, ones we're going to be doing are on haulback assemblies and haulback motors, and then the other one is on a vibratory or haptic motor. So Jack, thank you for the help. If, for those of you that need to uh, get in contact with Jack, you can see the icon at the bottom. Email him at that uh, email listed below. Thanks. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you.